welcome to worship here in All Saints to our service this morning of Holy Communion. Good morning. But let's just fill our hearts now, mate, in the presence of Almighty God. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. We pray together the prayer of preparation. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. So let us confess our sins in penitence and in faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. Let us pray. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We stand to say the glory. Glory to God in the house and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayers. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And our prayers continue in the words of the Colic Sect of the today. Let us pray. Generous God, you give us gifts and make them grow. Though our faith is small as mustard seed, Make it grow to your glory and the flourishing of your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Will you please be seated as we listen to our reading and to join in the psalm. Thank you. First reading is from Isaiah chapter 10, beginning at verse 5. Woe to thee, Simeon, the rod of my anger in whose hands is the club of my wrath. I send him against the godless nations. I dispatch him against the people who anger me to seize loot and snatch plunder and to trample them down like mud in the streets. But this is not what he intends. This is not what he has in mind. His purpose is to destroy, to put an end to many nations. For he says, by the strength of my hand I have done this, and by my wisdom, because I have understanding, I remove the boundaries of nations, I plunder their treasures like a mighty one, I subdue their kings. As one reaches into the nest, so my hand reach for the wealth of the nations. As people gather abandoned eggs, so I gather all the countries, not one flat to wing, or open.
the lips now to chip. Does the act raise itself and get above the person who swings it? Or does someone boast against the one who uses it? As if a rod were to wield the person who lifts it up. Or a club brandish the one who is not wood. Therefore the Lord, the Lord Almighty, will send a wasting disease upon the disturbing warriors. Under his palm, a fire will be kindled like a blazing flame. This is the word of the Lord. And speak to you. The psalm is Psalm 94, and the response is, Righteous are you, O Lord, and true are your judgments. Righteous are you, O Lord, and true are your judgments. They crush your people, O Lord, and afflict your heritage. They murder the widow and the stranger, the orphans they put to death. And yet they say, the Lord will not see, neither shall the God of Jacob regard it. Consider most stupid of people, you fools, when will you understand? He that planted the ear shall not hear. He that formed the eye shall not he see. He who corrects the nations shall he not punish. He who teaches the people does he lack knowledge. The Lord knows every human thought that they are but a breath. Righteous are you, O Lord, and true are your judgments. Will you please stand for the reading of the gospel? The Lord be with you. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. At that time Jesus said, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the learned, and have revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for this is what you were pleased to do. All things have been committed to me by my Father, no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and those to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Let us pray. that we might receive from you good things. In the name of your Son, the Lord. Amen. Our reading according to the Gospel of Matthew today is a bit odd. It's a short little text. All the readings today have been short, haven't they, compared to what we've had recently. But it's a short little text that sounds like it's been quoted from a much larger word. It feels as if it should have something in front and something to continue with. And yet there it sits in Matthew's Gospel. Sort of on its own, not quite fitting in. It's in the form of a prayer. A conversation between Jesus and his Heavenly Father. Which would be fine, except that Matthew's account, he says this comes from within a discourse that Jesus had with the crowd talking to the crowds, and then suddenly he's praying. Doesn't quite fit. Jesus has been talking to the crowds about the kingdom of God, and this short excerpt is introduced to us as having been said at that time. Another odd thing is that when you read the, the wider context, the master has lost his disciples. They're not mentioned at all. 
those who had been appointed directly by Jesus as his disciples, the twelve, as we might know them. And the way that the story is told by Matthew, the setting does feel like Jesus is alone, responding to and teaching the crowd, possibly in response to questions they were asking him. And if you read what goes before, you might get the impression that Jesus sounds a little bit tired of the crowd and their refusal to accept him and his teachings, despite the miracles and the other wonders that had happened through him. So Jesus compares those towns and villages where he was, his own home being nearby, and to whom he had preached God's words. He likens them to Sodom and Gomorrah and to the pagan cities of his day, to Tyre and Sidon. His own neighbours, his hometowns and villages had in the main rejected his teachings and had chosen to ignore the few wonders he did whilst he was amongst them. We've talked about those before. How can you ignore a few wonders? It's an odd thing, isn't it? A wonder is a wonder, whether there's one or two or many. But they refused to accept them as signs of his appointment by his father. And so he's talking to them and then suddenly, abruptly almost, he changes his whole tone and the tenor of his voice and prays to his father audibly so that the crowd can hear what he says. And you can sort of imagine him turning his gaze from the crowd, from the crowd heavenwards as he begins as all good prayer should with a prayer of praise and thanks to his father. Jesus addresses his father as one might give a report to an employer on the process, sorry, I should say progress, it didn't make sense at all to me. Jesus addresses his father as one who might give a report to an employer on progress in the work the employer had sent him to do. So the father's, on the father's command, he's reporting to his father how things are going. And this very person, personal, person-to-person -person conversation is therefore heard by all who stand around him. Those who only a moment or two before Jesus had been condemning for their lack of belief are now allowed, even encouraged, to eavesdrop on an intimate father-son conversation. And in another contrary-wise twist, Jesus begins by thanking the Father for the success of the mission so far. Chorazin, Bethsaida and Capernaum were not totally deaf and blind to his teachings, having berated them for their unbelief. The little children, or infants is the original word, had opened their hearts to his message and had responded. Elsewhere in Matthew, disciples of Jesus are supposed to be wise and they've been given wisdom. They're supposed to have been given understanding. So this can't be a tirade against ignorance, but rather, I think, a comment on those who think themselves as wise. Those who think themselves as knowledgeable. The response of the infants to the message is not one made by their wisdom. Because by definition, such very young children can have little or no wisdom as yet. With age, hopefully, comes some degree of wisdom, true. And there has been no time for wisdom in these little children, for it to gain a hold in their lives. No. Those infants respond as they would to a parent or to a trusted elder, with the simplicity and the acceptance that those with so much wisdom can't do. The wisdom almost gets in the way. Our wisdom gets in our way sometimes, doesn't it? A child responds in simple trust. But the world-weary adult is sceptical and wary and would rather be self-reliant, be in control of their own destiny. By doing so, the adult loses their destiny whilst the child is open to receive good things at the hand of those that they trust. Those who have climbed high in the realms of religious learning 
and even religious experience, it would seem, have more problems in responding to revelation than those who have little or no spiritual awareness, but whose minds are still in learning mode. Child just soaks up stuff, doesn't it? Soaks up information and knowledge like a sponge. An essential state of mind for a little child, if they're ever to mature to any state of independence. You have to learn quickly when you're young, don't you? Jesus was not literally talking solely about the contrast between the infant and the mature religious leader of his day. Or at least Jesus wasn't saying that only a child could receive that divine revelation. His reference to being as a little child is a reference to that open state of mind that's not centred on self. On another occasion, Jesus does gaze around at the whole crowd of ordinary people, and he calls them little people or little ones. In his day, the contrast between the poor and those in leadership and authority was as stark as it is today, if not more so. On top of that contrast of status is a contrast in numbers. The few who would exercise their religious influence and power, or try to do so, over the vast majority of ordinary little people. I've got a study book at home, which I had a look at before I wrote this sermon. And the commentator describes the prayer that Jesus prayed as an admission of failure of the kingdom. And to a small degree, I guess it is. Only those small people receive the kingdom, or those who were prepared to be small. And so with regards to those with religious credentials, the mission of Jesus can be seen as a total failure, or at least almost a total failure. Even amongst those ruling classes, the faith leaders, Jesus did have some few noticeable and notable successes. Nicodemus and Joseph were names that spring to mind as those who accepted his message. And those two were instrumental in his burial in a stranger's tomb. But now it's our turn. As we gather here around this simple repast of bread and wine, where there's no lavish banquet thrown to impress the palates, tuned by expensive and expensive delicacies here to simple bread and wine. Something that those rich or so they think might turn their nose about. But we are invited to approach with open and re 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 receptive hearts. Yet those with doubts may enter here. Those who have no education in theology or spirituality are welcomed. Those who are willing to come as little children, as infants, are the ones who will leave here refreshed, restored and in their right minds. Those who have nothing to bring other than themselves will here receive the pearl of great price, the very treasuries and mysteries of the gospel of Christ. For here they will encounter him as the host of this table and be sent out as his people to love and to serve him, the little ones who the world overlooks. Amen. So in the light of what we have heard and what we have received from him, let us stand and affirm our faith in our faithful God in the words of the creed. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is made. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. And so as we kneel or sit, we bring to our Heavenly Father our prayers and our intercessions on behalf of others. 
Let us pray. Loving God, ever true, ever faithful to the promises you have made, we come before you this morning with praise and thanksgiving to celebrate your unfailing love and mercy. Everlasting God, we pray that all who come into this church may be enabled to renew their relationship with you and may find in you rest, peace, and most of all, your abiding presence. We pray for our bishops, priests, and all who minister to your faithful people. May your blessing rest on each one. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the people of America following the assassination attempt over the weekend that the campaign ran and the killing of one person and injuring of others. Holy Father, pray for the people of your world living in these places where your earth is exploited and marred by violence and war, especially Ukraine, Gaza and the Holy Land. Help us to remember those who are weary with the relentless struggle to survive. We pray for Charles, our King, and for all who bear the privilege of leadership that they will work tirelessly towards peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. stand for the peace. We stand in the presence of the one who is King of Kings and Lord of Lords, and who is our Prince of Peace, the peace of the Lord be always with you. Please do exchange with each other as you can, a sign of God's peace. Peace be with you. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this bread to set before you, which earth has given and human hands have made, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this wine to set before you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, we do give you thanks and praise through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living Word, through whom you have created all things, who was sent by you in your great goodness to be our Saviour. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh. As your son, born of the Blessed Virgin, he lived on earth and went about to us. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross. He put an end to death by dying for us, and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So he fulfilled your will and won for you a holy people. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord, and as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit. The broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son, who in the same night as he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In 
In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, and again he gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant that is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. And as we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we in the company of all the angels and all the saints may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom. In the unity of the Holy Spirit all honour and glory be yours Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. So let us pray with confidence, as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. And though we are many, we are one body because we all share one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. Jesus is the Lamb of God, takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. Body of Christ, we pass in the Let us pray. Lord God, whose Son is the true vine and the source of life, ever giving himself that the world may live, may we so receive within ourselves the power of his death and passion, that in his saving cup we may share his glory and be made perfect in his love. For he is alive and reigns now and forever. Amen. And we all pray together. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. 
Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Amen. It's been good to share fellowship with you this morning. Uh, right. Now normally I'd ask you for a hymn. But I'm not going to. Who do you like me to sing you one? It's one that came to my mind. Um, it's a song that came to my mind when I was writing the sermon for today. Um, from a long time ago, the hymn is. I haven't heard it sung here because it's not in your hymn book. Um, it's not in a lot of hymn books, but it is one that I grew up with. And it's called I Found the Pearl of Greatest Price. I mentioned it, didn't I? Those who come willing to receive, those who come empty handed, those who come not full of themselves, to receive from God, find the pearl of greatest price. So I'm going to try. One of those hymns that's normally sung with an organ, not a guitar, but I'll try.
the peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and the love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you and all those you love and pray for, both this day and forevermore. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.